Hello, this is Mrs. Butcher, and this is a video on literal equations. This is section 1.4. Now, when we say literal equations, we're talking about equations that have more than one variable. So when the instructions say to solve for a variable, that means you're going to rewrite the equation as an equivalent equa equation, so you have to follow your order of operations, um, in which the variable that you're solving for is on one side and does not appear on the other side, and that's important. All right, so let's do some examples. For our first example, we're going to use the formula for the area of a triangle. We're going to solve A equals 1 half BH for the height. Then we're going to find the height of a triangle with a base of 4 inches and an area of 18 square inches. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this literal equation that has three different variables in it, and we are going to first take care of that 1 half. So if I have A equals 1 half BH, then to get rid of it, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. The multiplication property of equality says that you can do that because those will cancel out. So 2a equals bh. And since we're solving for the height, we want to get our h by itself. We need to undo this multiplication by dividing. And our h is equal to 2a over b. Um, sorry, that's supposed to be an h. <laughs> All right, now we're going to find the height when the base is 4 and the area is 18 inches squared. So we're going to just plug in now. The height equals 2 times 18 divided by base of 4. We've got square inches and inches, so we know we don't have to convert any um, units. And 2 times 18 divided by 4 gives you 9 inches. And make sure you always write your units when you are doing a problem that has units in it. All right, here's another one. We're going to use the formula for the area of a trapezoid. We're going to solve A equals 1 half times B1 plus B2. And please note that these are subscripts. They're not like exponents. They're not something you would multiply it by. They're just little subscripts. Um, so that's just saying the first base and the second base and then times H. And we're going to solve for B1. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get rid of the 1 half just like we did before. Um, so we can make it 2A equals b1 plus b2 all times h. And so since we're working our order of operations backwards, the next thing we need to get rid of is this h. And the way you would do that is to divide both sides by h so that they cancel over here. So now I have 2a over h equals b1 plus b2. And if I want to solve for b1, all I need to do is move the b2. So I've got b1 equals 2a over h and then we took away B2. And that is that. Here's a fun one. We're going to solve BX plus UX plus CH equals ER for X. So this one is all letters, and we need to get X all by itself. So what we want to do, and pay close attention here, we have X in two different terms. So what we want to do is take these two terms, and we want to factor out the X. It's like the opposite of distributing. So we're going to put the x out to the side and then put b plus u. Think about that. If I were to distribute the x, I would have x times b is bx, and I would have x times u is ux. So I factor out the x, and then I have b plus u, and then plus ch equals er. So the next thing I want to move is the ch, and I have x, b plus u, equals er minus ch. And then, since I just want to get x by itself, and this is all a group that's being multiplied by x, I can just divide by that same group, b plus u, and divide this by b plus u. So I now have x equals er minus ch all over b plus u. Here's another example. Solve x over m equals a plus h minus x all over m. Solve it for x. So here's another one where x is in here more than once. And we need to get it all by itself. So what I'm going to do is I am going to first get rid of this m in the bottom. I don't want fractions. So to get rid of a fraction, you multiply everything by the denominator. As long as you multiply everything in the equation, by that denominator, so I'm just going to put it out in parentheses, x over m equals a plus h minus x all over m. 
you distribute it to this and this and this, then it's still equal. So now if I distribute it to the first one, they cancel out and I get x equals, and then m times a would be ma, and then times the second group, the m's would cancel, and I'd have plus h minus x. So now what I need to do is take this minus x, and I'm going to basically combine like terms, so I'm going to add x to each side, and x plus x gives you 2x, so 2x equals ma plus h, see what I'm doing here, and then x equals, we're going to divide it all, and you have to do every single bit of it, ma plus h all over 2. Cute, huh? All right, and this last example we're going to do is not technically a literal equation. It only has one variable, um, so we're going to solve it for x, but it's got some processes that I want you to think about, um, and that is because we've got a 5 here and a 3 here. So in the last uh, problem that we did, we multiplied everything by m to get rid of our denominators. In this case, our common denominator is going to be 15. So we're going to multiply everything by 15. I'm going to take 15 times 2x, I'm going to multiply it also by this group, 3 parentheses x minus 1 all over 5, I'm going to multiply it by negative x over 3, and I'm going to multiply it by the 4, all of it. So 15 times 2x gives me 20x, I mean 30x, sorry. And then if I take 15 times 3 and divided by 5, I get 9. So 9, and then the x minus 1 stays in parentheses. And then when I multiply 15 times x and divide it by 3, I have minus 5x. And 15 times 4 is 60. So now I don't have fractions anymore. Now I have something that's really easy to put together. I want to distribute my 9. So 30x plus 9x minus 9 minus 5x equals 50. I mean 60. Ugh. And we want to combine like terms. So the 30x, the 9x, and then the minus 5x gives me 34x. And then I'm going to add 9 to both sides equals 69. Then we divide both sides by 34, and we will have an x value of 69 over 34, which actually does not reduce. If it reduces, you are required to reduce it, but if it does not, well, then that's it. I'd rather see a fraction than a decimal. Now, is there a way to check this? Of course there is. All you have to do is go back to the original and plug it in here and here and here for x and make sure it works. So whenever you're working through problems, if you have the time to check your answer, you really should um, do that just, you know, just in case you did something silly along the way and you got the wrong answer. All right, so here's one more for you to solve, and if you, uh, you know, if you've got this all figured out, you can let me know in class tomorrow. All right, guys, have a good night.